old Japanese designs are durable. Mitsubishi Pajero, for example, is now in its third generation. Meanwhile, its first generation is still alive and well. The Koreans produced this SUV under the name Hyundai Galloper for eight whole years after he left the Japanese conveyor. The Korean SUV Hyundai Galloper began selling in 1992. The model almost completely copies the first-generation Mitsubishi Pajero, produced from 1981 to 1991. Of course, the Koreans did not make a pirated copy, but bought a license in a civilized manner. In 1997, the first and only restyling was carried out. In Europe, the updated car was presented at the Geneva Motor Show in early 1998. The main changes affected the design and, to a lesser extent, the equipment. The chassis scheme remained practically the same, with the exception of the rear suspension, which lost its archaic springs and became spring-loaded. During the modernization, the car acquired new headlights and a radiator grille, the hood and fenders ceased to be parallel rectangular and acquired roundness. Bumpers began to be painted in body color. Something appeared in the filling, first of all, ABS and an airbag. It should be noted that in Europe, due to the peculiarities of the license agreement, the upgraded Galloper was sold through Mitsubishi dealers. In 2000, the last copies of the SUV rolled off the assembly line, and Hyundai Tegasap replaced it. The engineers of the Hyundai concern, when launching their first Galloper SUV, did not go their own way, but simply bought a license from Mitsubishi for the production of Mitsubishi Pajero I Generation, 1981-1991, by that time already out of production. When selling the license, the Japanese had one condition this model should be supplied only to the Asian market. Despite the fact that our country seems to belong to Europe, Mitsubishi apparently did not think so, and therefore the Galloper was successfully sold. After the modernization of 1997, the restriction on delivery to Europe was partially removed, the updated model could only be sold through official Mitsubishi dealers. Therefore, all pre-styling Gallopers and most of the post-styling ones either run from scratch or were brought from Asian countries. So, for the most part, these SUVs did not know the European Autobahns, regular maintenance and the same regular serious technical checks, but nevertheless, despite the by no means hothouse conditions of existence, they are distinguished by survivability. The only thing to be avoided is specimens with minimal equipment, there is no hydraulic booster, leatherette interior. These are purely military vehicles, and they only went on sale after they were decommissioned from the army police and other government services of Korea and a number of other countries. Probably, it is not necessary to say that the state of a state-owned car is rarely good. In terms of design and type of all-wheel drive, Galloper is the most common, one might even say, classic SUV. Although it cannot be attributed to real rogues because of the independent front suspension, the fact that the continuous beam of the front axle, dependent front suspension, withstands constant off-road operation without problems has been verified, but the independent suspension requires careful and attentive treatment. Body So, about the design, the body of the car is fixed on a powerful frame. Its corrosion resistance is very high, which, unfortunately, cannot be said about the body. On runaway specimens, rust can be found on the edges of the wings, sills, and at the bottom of the doors. However, the corrosion process is quite slow and in view of the fact that the structure is framed, you should not worry that one day the floor will fail under your feet or some other similar cataclysm will happen. It rusts slowly, but it does not affect anything other than appearance. However, this is not entirely true, along with body parts, all kinds of bolts and nuts for fastening components and assemblies rust, and when they are unscrewed, you can easily encounter a picture so familiar to domestic cars when the edges break off, that's break off. The Galloper was produced in two versions, short wheelbase three-door version and a long wheelbase five-door version. The capacity of the three-door is approximately the same as in the Neva, two people in front, two in the back, although if there is an urgent need, you can shove a fifth on the back sofa. But, by and large, the short Galloper is a car for two adults and two children who can easily squeeze past the reclined front seats, and it's not easy for a well-fed or elderly person to climb into the rear seats. So long. The long modification is devoid of all these inconveniences, and in addition, many instances are equipped with an additional third row of seats, which turns this SUV into a seven-seater car, however, with the same caveat that only children are comfortable on the farthest sofa. The car was offered with different levels of equipment, so in the basic version there is practically nothing, except perhaps the power steering, 
and in the more advanced ones there are power accessories, air conditioning, in the five-door version, two stoves, and in post styling versions, also ABS, airbags, leather interior, and, accordingly, other pleasant things. Suspension The Galloper suspension is fairly traditional for an 80s SUV. Front, independent torsion bar with two levers and anti-roll bar. Behind, a classic dependent, continuous bridge, which received springs only on copies of the last years of production. On most machines, it is fixed on archaic springs. Needless to say, the spring suspension, according to current concepts, belongs to a truck or a pickup truck, but not to a modern car. For used cars, springs are the most ambush suspension unit. They tend to burst from old age and stress. And, as a rule, somewhere in the pampas. And since these same springs are also the guiding element of the suspension, their failure leads to the fact that the bridge leaves from its attachment points. Well, if in this case everything is limited to an undocked spline joint of the cardan shaft and broken brake pipes. However, everything is not so sad, because at first, as a rule, the rooted spring sheets burst, and it is clear to the crouched look of the car, something is wrong in the rear suspension. By the way, if trouble with springs happens far from Mitsubishi and Hyundai service centers, then as a temporary measure it is quite acceptable to use parts from UAZ, GAZ, and others, but as the well-known joke says, with minor locksmith modifications. Considering driving performance, it should be noted the tendency of the short wheelbase version to go on a broken road, while the five doors, even with spring suspension, have a smooth ride that is quite decent for an ancient SUV. In general, in terms of reliability and resource, the suspension does not differ from the Pajarovskaya, and, with the exception of the stabilizer struts, during normal operation it may not require attention up to 100,000 kilometers. After this period, it is often necessary to replace the guide levers, ball bearings and pendulum lever. Transmission The transmission uses the classic type of part-time all-wheel drive, from time to time, where the rear axle is the main one and the front axle is connected manually and only for driving on uneven surfaces. These requirements must be met because there is no center differential in the transfer case, the rear and front axles are rigidly connected. The consequences of driving in 4 times 4 mode on asphalt do not appear immediately, the cost of their elimination is very high, so when buying a car, it is worth checking the transmission for all kinds of backlash. It should also be borne in mind that the crosses of the car and shafts, if they are not regularly injected, turn into consumables, the same as, for example, filters. The connection of the front axle on most instances is carried out through automatic couplings, which have wear properties. This wear is revealed just at the moment when the car is slipping somewhere off-road. Under load, the clutch knocks out, and the car becomes rear-wheel drive. Alas, the state of the couplings is not visually determined, and if you have to use an SUV far from civilization, it is better to change this node in advance or replace the automatic machines with almost eternal manual connectors. True, in this case, before overcoming off-road, you will have to get out of the car and manually turn the switch. As befits an SUV, the transfer case has a demultiplier, downshift, and on some instances, a self-locking rear axle differential. The gearbox is both a traditional 5-speed mechanics and a 4-band automatic, usually with gasoline engines. All transmission units are very reliable and subject to the rules of operation and maintenance, as well as the timely replacement of oil seals, can run 300,000 kilometers or more. Engine Several variants of the four-cylinder 2.5-liter diesel were offered for the Hyundai Gallop. A simple atmospheric modification developed a power of 72 horsepower, a turbo version, 85 horsepower, and a variant with intercooling of the charged air, 105 horsepower. A 3.0-liter V-shaped gasoline 6 was also installed, which, depending on the modification, produces 141 or 161 horsepower. The gasoline engine is very reliable, and, in addition to malfunctions of the injection system caused by the electrician and contamination of the injector, it does not cause problems. That's just fuel consumption of 18 to 19 liters in urban areas, someone can be unpleasantly struck. Diesels are much more economical but have a number of weak points. However, this only applies to turbocharged engines. They are prone to cracks in the blockhead, especially in the fourth cylinder, and valve brakes. The turbine, which does not have direct cooling, does not differ in good health. 
so when buying a diesel horse, it is advisable to diagnose the power unit at a specialized service. Total. In terms of maintenance and repair costs, Galloper is one of the most inexpensive SUVs. Most of the spare parts are identical to the Padzorovsky ones, which makes it possible, if necessary, to purchase a second-hand one. At the same time, the cost of new original spare parts is not at all high, and therefore it is worth visiting the dismantling only with serious problems, such are the failed transfer case, gearbox, gearbox. The car is not too difficult to repair, and due to the fact that many services are able to serve its Japanese ancestor, even fixing major faults is relatively inexpensive. The main advantage of Galloper is its price. Although, in addition to this, there are a number of positive qualities, such as the simplicity of design, proven over several decades, the lack of interest from the hijackers, an acceptable level of comfort and safety, as well as the good capacity of long wheelbase versions.